What's up my comic comrades? Today we are giving the spotlight to Marvel's big-headed mega-villain, MODOK. He is of course making his MCU debut in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, so it's time to get more acquainted with this weird but dangerous dude. The question is how big of a role will he have in the film? Thankfully, we don't have to wait much longer to find out. In the meantime, let's break down MODOK's comic book history. Murdoch made his first cameo appearance in Tales of Suspense issue 93 in September of 1967. It made his first full appearance in Tales of Suspense 94 in October of 1967. He was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. What most people don't know is that Modoc is actually a reinvented version of a character Jack Kirby had already co-created years earlier with Joe Simon. This character would be Marto, the enemy of Blue Bolt, was the first character Kirby and Simon created together. As you can see, there is a clear resemblance between Marto and Modoc, as they're both essentially just giant heads attached to robotic bodies. So if you didn't know, now you know. Also, MODOK is an acronym for Mental Mobile Mechanized Organism Designed Only for Killing. But with that said, let's get into the character's origin. MODOK vaguely gives us his origin in Tales of Suspense issue 94 after Captain America is captured by AIM. During Captain America's capture, he learns that MODOK was created to be AIM's greatest weapon, but instead MODOK enslaved AIM himself. This all went down in Tales of Suspense issue 93, but in Tales of Suspense issue 94, MODOK finally reveals himself to us and Captain America saying, I am MODOK. Once I was a mere human guinea pig for the science scientists of AIM, but they did their job too well, and now I am their master. At this point, MODOK and Cap of course get into a fight with Captain America ultimately winning, as the AIM agents use this distraction to shoot and destroy MODOK's exoskeleton hover chair that houses MODOK's head and tiny body. But years later, in the supervillain team up MODOK's 11 5 issue miniseries, we get MODOK's origin and a flashback at the beginning of the first issue. At the beginning of the issue, we see George Tarleton, a low-level member of AIM, where he's asking a girl, but what about our relationship? She replies, only you could think that a drunken hookup during a company party meets the basic criteria for a relationship, George. Look, I thought I could learn something from you, okay? I thought your shy, stuttering demeanor disguised a brilliant mathematician, but no, you're just like the drip I had a fling with in college. I thought he'd be a great physicist one day, but he turned out to be a little man trapped in a smaller man's body. Stop paging me. Stop lurking around my quarters. It's embarrassing. And as she's saying all of this to him, both of them are surrounded by a bunch of other AIM agents. As an AIM agent from above shouts out, need brave volunteers for the lottery to become the subject prime in AIM's greatest project to date, a hybrid of man and machine capable of millions of complex calculations per millisecond. George then looks at his tablet that reads MODOK Mental Organism Designed Only for Computing, telling us that computing and not killing was the original idea. George then says to himself while looking at his tablet, OK, Monica, we'll see who's the little man, as he volunteers for the experiment. But when the day comes as the agents are dragging him, he says, wait, I think I've changed my mind. But the head AIM agent says, shut up. Everyone in AIM knows you to be unimaginative, but your brain is about to undergo 1 billion years of evolution in a matter of moments. Soon only you will be capable of the infinitely complex complex calculations necessary to bring Project Cosmic Cube to fruition. The secrets of all creation are about to be laid bare by your genius, George Tarleton. For reason's sake, man, face them with some dignity as they place him into the device that would essentially become his new body. As they place him into the machine and turn it on, he starts screaming no as his eyes turn white and his mind and body are changed forever. Meanwhile, the AIM agents are saying, rise, MODOK, rise and pledge eternal undying servitude to the scientist supreme. But once George, now MODOK says to himself, unexpected variable in the equation. Interfere with the proof. Life. Why is there life? No reason, no justification for life. Unnecessary variable does not fit. Subtract it and statement is true. And all life, balance equation. Perfect, clean, pure, as he kills the scientist supreme and the rest of the agents. So originally meant to be the mental organism designed only for computing, George emerged as the mental organism designed only for killing. Giving us the origin of the creepy floating head, MODOK. But now that you know how MODOK became MODOK, let's take a look at some story arcs. But first, we got this interesting letter delivered to the studio, which reads, Dear Variant, in our restless dreams, we see the town, Silent Hill. We promised we'd take you there someday, and we will. Well, we're here now at Figurama Collectors, waiting for you to join us. Yep, that's right. Today's sponsor is Figurama, and they've created yet another insane collectible with their new Silent Hill 2 statue. For all our horror fans out there, you love the video games, the movies, now you can bring the scares home for all to see. There are a total of five characters represented in this impressively detailed statue, including Red Pyramid Thing, James Sunderland, and Monsters at abstract daddy, fresh lips, and lying figure. And for the first time at Figurama Collectors, a statue character can be taken out of a display. More specifically, James Sunderland can be swapped for the television from the game to create a Red Pyramid Thing solo piece. The letter goes on to let us know that this terrifying collectible releases February 11th at 11 p.m. Japanese Standard Time, or for those of you in the States, 8 a.m. Central the same day. So if you're looking to grab one, make sure to join the waitlist now because these statues
statues can be gone in less than a day or even one hour after release, and statues from Figurama usually double in price on the secondary market after they sell out. But the good news is that the letter also says that the Variant family gets $35 off when using the coupon code VTSH2. Just click the link in the description and use our code to get on it. In more recent years, Bodok has become known as more of a comedic villain, which I mean, given the way the character looks, there's only really two ways you can go with it. Either really dark and grotesque or comedic. With that said, we gotta talk about Bodok's first story ever that took place in Tales of Suspense issue 93 and 94. This is a story that I briefly touched on in Origins, where Modok alluded that he was a fellow scientist at AIM turned into a guinea pig for their new weapon, at which point his head grew massive while his arms and legs didn't. It's in these two issues that Captain America was trying to save Agent 13 from an underwater base, but instead he was greeted by Modok. The two get into a quick fight, but ultimately the AIM agents use this opportunity to shoot MODOK, destroying his robotic casing, essentially making him helpless. As MODOK lies on the floor saying MODOK must not die like any helpless being, for once I possess the power to change the world. Next we have the story from The Incredible Hulk issue 168. In the story, MODOK kidnapped Betty Ross, the love of Bruce Banner. What was his master plan besides pissing off the Hulk, you ask? Well of course expose her to gamma radiation, turning her into a green gamma hulking harpy. If you don't know what a harpy is, it's a half bird, half woman harpy harbinger of death in Greek mythology. Now a harpy, she says to MODOK, where is he? Where is Bruce Banner? The Hulk. The man I will destroy. MODOK says, gently, my dear, gently. As she blasts him with energy, he says, you have ample time to seek your vengeance. As he says to himself, she is all I hope for and more. The blasts from her hands are as powerful as nuclear weapons, and her mind, though still suffused with pure hatred for the Hulk, has become more lucid. If you're wondering why Betty wants revenge, MODOK is essentially manipulating her into getting revenge because Bruce evidently led to her father's capture, as well as blaming him for her new husband's death. Now as a harpy, she goes after the Hulk and the two have a pretty epic fight, with her even picking up the Hulk by her talons and flying him over the city before dropping him down on the street below. And though the issue ends with her having Hulk on the ropes, in the very next issue, 169, the two's feud is broken up by Bye Beast. But then it starts to get really Hulk-centric, and the whole focal point here is that MODOK is the one who set it all into motion. Moving on, you also have the story from Miss Marvel issue 5 from the 70s. Basically what's going down here is AIM kicked out MODOK, which pissed him off, but he was like, you know what? I'm gonna prove my worth to them. So he decided to do something that would show they clearly needed him. He plans to release some harmful material on New York City, killing millions, showing AIM just how dangerous he really is. The problem was, Miss Marvel and Vision were able to stop the truck of harmful material he was having a robot drive into the city. They even fought the robot driver and defeated him. And Vision then says, either the real driver was kidnapped and replaced, or Robbie the robot here has been running around Starks a very long time. I wonder if there are any others. I wonder who sent him. As we see MODOK on the last panel of the issue say, yeah, what kind of madman deliberately sets out to exterminate 20 million people? You'll learn that answer soon enough, Miss Marvel, and the day you learn it will be the day you swear to serve me faithfully forever. Then in 2008, Hulk 29 gives us MODOK Superior. Essentially, MODOK wanted to improve on being an ultimate organism designed for killing. And there's only one way to do that, ditch any ounce of normal human weakness you may have. Well, of course you do that by cloning your brain and then growing it the way you want to. The comic tells us this brain was allowed to not be cut from higher function. We learned that while other brains were used for data processing, this one was allowed to develop. The comic then says to you it's logical duplication, mere regeneration of cells to keep an entity going. But it is more than that. The DNA is the same, but MODOK knew his next incarnation would not simply be himself and new. Even with all the same memories transformed, it would have a new personality, new purpose. As the brain is placed into his new body, his robots asks, is the procedure successful? MODOK replies, of course it is. There was no room for error. He then says, you may rejoin my skull and suction me. I wish to experience the world in corporal form immediately. I engineered this body with far fewer nerves. I have no interest in feeling pain to the extent of my progenitor. He was a great organism, and today we toast his foresight. He understood the extent of the power he challenged. He knew he might fall to the Hulk. MODOK basically goes on to say he knew his past form knew he had to evolve into what he dubs MODOK Superior. As he says, MODOK Superior has risen. MODOK would also appear in other stories and things like Unbelievable Gwenpool, Peter David's new Maestro World War M and World War PAX miniseries, and tons of other titles. But now let's move on to powers and abilities. As one would assume, MODOK's greatest power is his brain. His intelligence is essentially a living computer. He has the ability to search enormous databanks of information almost instantaneously to solve any abstract and mathematical problem there is. He also has the ability to calculate the mathematical probability and outcome of any event. Essentially, he is so smart, he can mathematically predict the future. He has the ability to control people with psionic powers. This also goes into the ability to generate force fields that can withstand nuclear explosions. If you notice, he also wears a headband. This was given to him and allows him to focus his mental powers into an energy beam that shoots from his forehead. Most notably, he wears an exoskeleton 
skeleton hover chair, and that is because after his mutation, his head became so big, his body could no longer support it. But in any case, the chair that he is forced to sit in has a ton of lasers, missiles, and all kinds of other weapons. As for weaknesses, if you destroy MODOK's exoskeleton hover chair, he's basically immobile, as we saw in his very first appearance when he fought Captain America. But now it's time for some reading recommendations. For some great MODOK reads, you want to pick up Tales of Suspense issues 93 and 94, Miss Marvel issue 5 from the 1970s run, Hulk issue 29 from 2008, the first several issues of the 2016 Unbelievable Gwenpool series, and Avengers Edge of Infinity. That should be enough to get you all started. And that's going to bring today's episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this one right here, and if you like all of our other content, like, subscribe, and comment. It helps us grow. But other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.